Howdy, it's Tubal Cain again, and I'm standing before my Bridgeport mill, and I've got a problem here, or an annoyance that has been uh, bothering me for some time now, and that is that sometimes when I change uh, chucks or other tooling on here, I drop them. In other words, my very expensive Albrecht chuck has dropped out of the collet as I'm changing it, and uh, hit the vise or even land on the floor and that just something I don't want to happen again and I certainly don't want that to happen with my coaxial indicator or anything else I've got uh, for that matter but uh, the problem is that normally it takes both hands I put one hand my left hand up on the the brake and the right hand of course holding the wrench so both hands are away from uh, the tooling but really I'd like to keep one hand right here and then the other up on the top with the wrench and uh, that wasn't possible to do because I needed to hold on to the brake now sure I could put it in back gears and some people will say that their brake uh, has a position up there that uh, allows you to lock it but mine doesn't do that or that feature is broken or worn out or whatever so I am trying to come up with a solution of how to keep both hands free while I change the tooling. For over 10 years I've had this cable and it came off one of my old Oldsmobiles. As a matter of fact it's the hood uh, release but it's only about six feet long so I had been looking for an eight footer I never could come up with one. You know you go to AutoZone or someplace everything's by application they don't go by length it's like a what do you want for your Honda Accord or your your Caprice or whatever it is well I had that I even came up with this pedal I don't know where I got that it's a cast aluminum I thought well that would be neat to operate the cable and uh, for a while I had a, a pedal and all the cables that came off of a driver education car and it was for the teacher to use when he was sitting in the shotgun position so that he could uh, apply the brake uh, in a panic situation but I never got that done either Another solution would be to use uh, an air cylinder, but my shop air leaks like crazy, and I bet yours does too. So I would have to turn the compressor on every time I wanted to use that feature or find the leaks, and I, I never can find the leaks, but this would be a handy way to do it also. It need to be a cylinder a little bit smaller than this, and it would be up on the brake, and it could be actuated by a little a foot valve, but uh, I just gave you the reason why I didn't want to do that but it would work. Another solution I thought about there is uh, what they call a linear actuator and that's uh, electrical and it uh, is a little motor really that operates a rod but those are kind of expensive and then you, you need a power supply and other kinds of, uh, of uh, uh, equipment with it and I didn't want to go into all that and the learning curve that's involved. So what I finally came up with, uh, I was going to use a slave cylinder up on the brake, a little smaller than this, and I'll show it to you in a minute here. And then I had this pump. I don't even know where I got that. It was a black ball on here. It was something for demonstration purposes. And I thought, well, I can mount that and uh, foot operate that. And that would be the pump that would uh, put the air up into the slave cylinder. But this didn't hold the air at all. It was almost like a bicycle pump, so that was a bit of a failure. So, one more idea yet. So the idea I finally settled on was uh, to use a Bimba air cylinder up here, and I bought that off of eBay, and it only has about oh inch and a half of, of stroke. I think it's 7 eighths in diameter. I made a little bracket that screws into the casting here, and the appropriate linkages here, and a little clevis to link it on to the lever for the brake. And then here's the airline, and that goes down to the pump on the bottom, and I'm calling this my slave cylinder. I had to put a little spring in there. They lied to me on eBay. I bought this on eBay. They said that there, it was spring-loaded for a spring return, but it wasn't. So that's why I had to put the spring on there. That thing only cost about six bucks, so it wasn't worth complaining. Because the guy that was selling the Bimba cylinders obviously knew nothing about them. 
So I called my brother in Cody, Wyoming, and he said, well, I got a bunch of bimba cylinders. Let me send them to you. So he sent me four of them, and I tried all three of these for my pump, and they were not satisfactory. Well, he had sent me a fourth cylinder, and there it is, and it was so big and fat I almost laughed when I first looked at it, but really, this is the one that works. And there's the airline running up to the slave cylinder. Now, the reason I put that little valve there is that sometimes I need to add air. Matter of fact, right now I could uh, open the valve and put a little air in there. In other words, just bleed it so this will come back up. And it would be nice to have a spring in there, but this is three quarter diameter and I didn't have any springs that would uh, suffice. Let me show you how it works. And I got a little bracket down here. And this is how it operates. I'm pumping with my foot. And here's how it looks from a worm's eye view. And here's what it looks like in operation. My foot is on the pump, my hand on the Albrecht, and I have safely removed the chuck without dropping it. I am fully aware that you can buy a power drawbar that would fit on the top, and that would release one's hands as well. Now I have very limited uh, ceiling space here. There's about 10 inches between the drawbar and the ceiling so uh, I'm not sure that would fit and it just wasn't the route I was going to go to but another thought occurred to me and that was to make it hydraulic to get uh, the slave cylinder and the pump off of perhaps a Dodge truck or whatever trucks used hydraulic clutch controls but I didn't know where to get one of those and didn't want to get a used one that I would have to rebuild and play around with and I think that a brand new one would be too expensive to use, but certainly a uh, hydraulic would be a great thing to use. Probably better than this. It's now several weeks later, and after experimenting and using my uh, pneumatic uh, brake here on the bridge port, and all the time that I spent on that, I have determined that it's a total and unequivocal failure. And I'm going to dismantle it and uh, Return the parts to my brother and on with another uh, plan uh, of cables, using cables like I originally was going to use. And uh, that will be the subject of the next video in this two-part series. But this was a failure, I'm sorry to say.